Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is March 5th, 2024, and this video was filmed live at noon Mountain Standard Time on March 5th, 2024. There's a chat running right here, and I've been engaging with them for the last few minutes. If you want to be part of that chat, get your questions answered, and be part of the giveaway, you need to be at this one live. It'll be next Monday at noon Standard Time. We're talking new knives, but without further ado, let's jump right in and talk about the first knife on the table, and that is this year's Spyderco Paramilitary 2 Salt. So this will say it is pre-order on bladehq.com and that's because it is. We had way more pre-orders than we got in in this first shipment, but I wanted to tell you we are seeing the first shipments of Reveal 14, including the Paramilitary 2 Salt. I'm excited about this one, this particular one with this black. They have a new texture on this. In fact, check out our video from SHOT Show this year. Eric Glesser broke down all the interesting things about this texture and it was quite fascinating. But the one I'm really excited for is the Crew Card of Manix. I'm very excited for that one. But we are starting to see Reveal 14 knives arrive at Blade HQ. So if you want one of these, hop on that pre-order list and you will get them as soon as we get them. Next up, from Bag Knives, we have the JVD designed Hawkbill. So there's a few things to note here. First of all, this is a bag knife and bags are known for their customs. One of the most expensive knives I've ever held was called The Hunt. And it was a bag custom. And my goodness, was that thing expensive. Like, thousands, probably $3,000. Beautiful engraving, but this is a $50 knife. Another interesting thing here is this is a straight up slip joint. Nail neck actuating, just simple design and everything, but it has a hawk bill on it and it looks kind of like self defense -y tactical style, which I, like the terms self-defense and slip joint don't often mix very well. Like they just, like it doesn't fit, but they have really done well. This is a JVD design and I don't know much about JVD design. This is the first knife I've ever held of theirs. And my goodness, have they done a good job. Like, it is a nice pocketable size. It looks classy, but it also looks tactical and like something you could actually use in the field if needed be. Very nice, and best of all, $47.95. Less than $50 getting you a beg knife. No more do you have to spend $3,000 to get a great beg. Next up, in the best tech world, we have the VK Core. So some of you extreme knife nerds out there may recognize the VK Core as the VK Void. The VK Void is a folder that they came out with last year. And the thing that was cool about it is this little like copper pin through it. And that is on both blades. And this one's the fixed blade variant of it though. And this one comes with a nice Kydex sheath and it's a 14C28N blade. So instead of that titanium frame lock and M390, you're getting a tougher steel. So 14C28N is very, very tough. Like, Tougher than a lot of the carbon steels we all know and love. In fact, it's getting up to that like AEBL and CPM 3V toughness. So I think it's a great choice for a fixed blade like this one. And then a nice piercy worn cliff. So I, like, I'm thinking like if you're cutting feed bags or ropes or anything else, like you're, you're doing some harder work, I think a fixed blade is probably a good choice instead of a folder, especially because you're not gonna get anything gumming up in a pivot because there's no pivot to gum up but you don't have to sacrifice the style. And this sheath snaps it really nicely. You could do a paracord wrap here if you'd want to. I probably would. And then a little peekaboo hole here so you can see that copper pin through the blade. It's a cool knife. Goes for $95. I like the VK Core over the VK Void. I don't know which one you, prepare, which one you prefer, but might as well get both if you are concerned. <laughs> anyway, next up we have the Best Tech Bruv. And every time I hear the word bruv, I want to say it in a British accent. This one's the best tech bruv. I know I have a terrible British accent. I'm an American, wear it proudly. However, the thing I wanted to call attention to on this one is its pocket clip. I was just telling Peter, our social media manager over here, that in heaven, all pocket clips will be like the one here on the, on the bruv because it is a milled titanium clip, but then it also is a deep carry with recessed screws and a recessed plate. So it's gonna slide in and out of your pocket effortlessly all the way to the base, but then you still get that premium feel and added strength and retention of a titanium clip. Very nicely done. And another thing I love is they made this flat and then gave a bulge down here. So that way, instead of having to curve down like this pocket clip does, they can just keep it flat. So sometimes when it has a curve here, they actually did a pretty good job here on the arcade it doesn't give you a hot spot, but sometimes when it's an especially tall curve, it can give you a hot spot. This one has none, and that is from the benefit of being a milled clip here. So, very nice indeed. 
I'm excited to see more clips like this in the future. But in, a, in addition to that nice pocket clip, we got a 3D contoured titanium handle scale. So oftentimes on a titanium scale, you'll see it flat and then a chamfer on the side. This one has the chamfer, but this is actually contoured here, which I imagine takes a lot of time on a machine. And for its price of 230, I feel like that is a very bougie accoutrement to have. Very nice indeed. Also fully internal mounted on the um, lock bar stabilizer. So for those of you who aren't unaware, titanium and steel do not get along very well. They like to stick together. So there's a few tricks that you can do to make a titanium frame lock work really nice. And the most common one you'll see is a lock bar insert. And that's what this little torque screw right here is telling you to do. Because on the inside, there's a steel piece that actually interfaces with the blade. And that will give you a much more smooth operating experience. And usually you'll see them mounted on the outside, but this one is mounted on the inside. Very nice indeed. And then an M390 sheep's foot blade. Sheep's foot's a great blade shape for everyday carry. Honestly, the Brub's just a cool knife, a nice slick front flipper. I like it a lot. It's a good knife. Next up, we have the new Flytanium Arcade. So what's new about this is we are now getting these like gray aluminum scales in. So these are not raw aluminum. These are, I believe, anodized to be this color, which honestly is basically the color of titanium. I think they look really similar. It's a good mix if you ask me, but cool indeed. This one has the Ultima handle scale, however you can get them with the black micarta and you can get the um, satin or black blades. So we have the gray ones as well as these like slate blue ones. I really like those. I think they're pretty. Personally, I like the black ones that came out a little while ago, but I'm glad to see that there's more colors. I was talking to Brian over at Flytanium. He's the industrial designer there. And he was saying that in the future, there may be some other colors, maybe even some other materials of the actual scale, not just the inlay. So if you are in the arcade ecosystem, I would be excited because there is more and more coming. It was not just a release and here it is. That system will be built out more and more and more as time goes by. Which I think makes the arcade a really great knife to just choose for an everyday carry knife because sometimes you have a knife and you don't necessarily want to buy a new knife. You like the knife you have, but you want to breathe some new life into it. And that's where Flytanium's had you covered for years. That's where your bug out scales, your paramilitary two scales, everything. However, the fact that they have a knife that has so many replaceable parts. You can do the backspacer, the clip, the scale, the handle itself here in a few months, the, th the thumb stud, all of these things are replaceable. You can dress this thing up a million different ways and make it a million different knives for not too much money because you can just replace the parts on the knife you have, which is a very nice thing I do indeed enjoy. So this one's going for 219 and I think it goes down if you don't have the coated blade. So. New arcades coming forth. Those are dropping on the 8th. So in three days, what's that? Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Thursday the 8th. But no, it's going to be Wednesday the 6th. I'm sorry. We won't get into this. It is dropping on March 8th. So look forward to that. It will be coming soon. And then the last knife on the table is from these new Machine Wise Balasongs. So this one's the Prisma. This is a trainer. Channel aluminum handles, bear, excuse me, bushings in the pivot, Zen pins, and a nice trainer blade. I really, really like this. First of all, the sound. Oh, it sounds so good. So good sounding. Very nice flipping as well. I love the purple on this. It looks great. It pops. And it has this nice micro texture. You might be able to catch that in the light here. It's going to be nice and grippy in the hand, but not too grippy. So it's going to be nice and easy to swing as well. Ooh, very nice. 185 at bladehq.com. A great knife indeed. However, we do have more than just these from Machine Wise. We have some of the fancy Live Edge battle songs. The most expensive one's like $700, but it is from the ground up built to be a maximum awesomeness battle song, competitive grade. I don't know that I'm quite good enough at a battle song to justify a $700 one, but this 185, that's in my wheelhouse. I could see myself getting one of these. And my favorite feature that I wish all battle song trainers had industries and here on the machine wise is this little row of jimping right there. That is one of the most important things to me because when you are using a balisong trainer, in essence, you are training to use an actual knife. And that training should ultimately result in you being able to handle a live edge safely. And this is here to teach you because that little bit of jimping, if you close that here, you kind of get pinched by it. It doesn't cut you, but it lets you know, hey, that is a little bit spiky and a little bit uncomfortable. And you get out of the habit of doing anything that will land that on your finger. So when you switch to a live edge, 
You never do this because a live edge will do a lot more than poke you with some jimping. It will cut you. And if you do a chaplain, it'll give you the ring of shame. Do not get a ring of shame. I pity whoever has had one in the past. I've seen one once and they had to like do gauze because you couldn't do a band-aid because you're going to be taping down on your actual cut. And then you can get degloving. And if you ever want nightmares, go look up what degloving is. Anyway, that is New Knives of the Week. We hope you've enjoyed and we will see you next time.